All right, so now we're gonna add some horseradish. Hello, homemakers, I'm Melinda, and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. And today we're making ham snacks. All right, ham snacks is from section P, crowd size entertaining, and it's card number 26. Um, this card was actually suggested to me by a viewer who also has the recipe card library. Um, so if you have a library at home and you have a card you want me to try, let me know. I'll try it. Um, <laughs> I'm nervous about this because I've never had deviled ham before. And basically this card is just two ham snacks, two ways to use canned deviled ham. Um, the first one is the deviled ham rolls, which are in the front here. The other recipe is for deviled puffs which you can see in the background here. And that is kind of like a cream puff, but instead of being filled with cream, it's filled with ham. I don't, I'm, not, I'm um, not looking forward to that, but I am excited to make the puff part. I think the technical word for that is uh, pat a choux or choux pastry. I am excited to try both these out, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's take a look at the ingredients. Um, I wanna note that because this is in crowd size entertaining, all of these recipes serve like a million people, I'm gonna cut everything in half. Like I think this says it serves six dozen appetizers. I don't need that many appetizers. So everything's cut in half, but let's go through it. For the deviled ham rolls, we need um, some cans of deviled ham, some olives, uh, cream cheese, and mustard and then crackers to serve it with. Then for the deviled puffs, we will need water, butter, flour, eggs, more deviled ham, obviously, <laughs> uh, horseradish, pepper, onion salt, I don't have onion salt, I'm gonna use onion powder and regular salt, and then sour cream. Um, yeah, very humble set of ingredients, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right, so I thought we would first make the deviled ham rolls because they have to chill for a while in the fridge. So we are basically um, gonna chop some olives and mix it with the deviled ham. We need half of three quarters. <laughs> so one and a half quarters of a cup, a little over a quarter cup. So I guess we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, chop these up. I think this is, will be nice too because you'll get like chunks of green and chunks of red in, within the ham mixture. All right, it's the moment of truth. It's the first time we're opening a deviled ham spread can. I'm very intrigued by this, pa <laughs> I'm very intrigued by this packaging. Um, I'm obsessed with this little Underwood Devil. It's premium quality spread. It's got like this like, it's wrapped in paper, which feels like very fancy to me. Like this is how you buy caviar or something, not deviled ham. But uh, what's it been here? There she is. Oh boy! <laughs> Part of me feels like I should taste it on its own before, because I'm only gonna taste it in the end. It smells like cat food. It looks like cat food and it smells like cat food. <sighs> I'm eating cat food. <laughs> This doesn't taste like half at all. It tastes very flavorful. Okay, I'm into it. I'm into deviled ham. <laughs> what does it taste like? It's very salty, so we have to be mindful of that. I'm not gonna put as much salt in as I thought I would. Okay, so we're doing half the recipe, so that's two cans. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in here with the olives. I'm nervous that now I have too many olives. We'll see what happens. I shouldn't have done it this way, but it's too late now. The ship has sailed. <gasps> what was at the bottom? Is that just fat at the bottom of the can? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Do you see what I'm talking about? The, the bottom of the kid? <laughs> fine, I'm not panicking. Everything's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just use it. I'm gonna put it in there. Nobody told me not to. I will say even though I've never had deviled ham, my parents have. My mom says that her mom used to make it from scratch with like leftover Easter ham. So she would kind of grind it in a meat grinder and then um, 
add like seasonings and mayo to it. I almost made like ham salad the way you make like tuna salad or chicken salad. My dad said he has had the deviled ham in a can before and has liked it. So maybe it's like a generational thing, but I've literally never heard of it. They never fed it to me, but they had it when they were kids. Okay, so now we're gonna mix the outside of the ham rolls, which is just cream cheese and mustard. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's, I'm just gonna leave the rest of that in the package for another day. And then we need a tablespoon plus a teaspoon, but a half tablespoon and a half teaspoon. Half tablespoon is like one and a half teaspoons and a half teaspoon is a half teaspoon, so that's two teaspoons. I am using a Dijon variety. You can use whatever you have at home. We're getting there. Things are getting combined. <laughs> All right, so we have to let the olive ham mixture kind of chill until it's firm enough to pack into a shape. But then once that's ready to go, we will spread this on top and the ham rolls will be done. All right, so while we're waiting for the deviled ham roll ingredients to chill, we should make the deviled puff filling. So again, we are using two cans of deviled ham. Oh, it's hard. I think I'm supposed to use one and a half cans, but I might just use two. This isn't that much meat, you know? Like, it's such a small little container. All right, so now we're gonna add some horseradish. Um, I was supposed to use horseradish in another recipe. I believe it was giant burger and I couldn't for, find prepared horseradish. So I used horseradish sauce and then everyone yelled at me on the internet like, that's horseradish sauce, it's not horseradish. So, so I found real horseradish. <laughs> and it turns out it was just in a different section of the grocery store. It's kept refrigerated by the hot dogs. And I was looking where the mustards are. Anyway, I need half a tablespoon. I'm kind of going a little over with these, I don't know why. And then the last thing is sour cream, and I need a third of a cup of sour cream. I'm gonna do a dollop of Daisy. Why not? Why not? I realize this isn't making a ton of food, so maybe I shouldn't have halved the recipes, but I also didn't want six dozen puffs. Three dozen puffs seems like plenty of puffs. Okay, so I didn't, obviously, like I said, I, I didn't know what deviled ham was, but I guess is it, <laughs> like I've heard of deviled eggs, and so I'm kind of just assuming that other things can be deviled. I feel like many, many back in the day, many things got deviled, and deviled eggs was the only one that kind of like stood the test of time, and so now everyone knows what deviled eggs are, but no one's heard of deviled ham, or I guess people have heard of deviled ham. This looks thoroughly mixed, so I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill, and then all we have to do is make the puffs and assemble everything. All right, so while we wait for our ham snacks to chill in the fridge, I thought we could do a little deviled ham history. <laughs> um, I just found this like Underwood Devil logo to be so cute, I had to know more, so I did a bunch of research on the Underwood company, and it's actually really fascinating um, how Underwood was able to kind of revolutionize the food production industry. So what I learned was that William Underwood was the founder of the company, and he um, immigrated from London to the United States in 1817. And at first, this is because he worked um, in London for as an apprentice at a bottling factory. So he knew the process and he wanted to bottle prepared foods himself in America. So he started making um, ketchup and mustard and pickles uh, in glass bottles and his company was very successful, exploded. He was starting to export his products um, to Asia and South America and the West Indies. And so he was running out of glass, like glass manufacturers couldn't keep up with his bottling needs. And so he developed an aluminum can that was coated on the inside in tin. And this allowed you to store food in aluminum. And this was just a more compact way of storing food, uh, easier to ship way of storing food um, and a safer way of storing food. And this revolutionized everything. It's because of his uh, aluminum cans that people were able to, um, you know, manifest destiny <laughs> themselves out to the West. 
Um, it was canned foods that fed soldiers during the Civil War. So it was a really um, integral part of food production was the invention that he created. Um, he started out with um, other meats. Um, I believe deviled ham specifically was invented in um, the 1870s. What intrigued me most about this can was the logo, and it turns out that the Underwood deviled ham logo was trademarked in 1870, and the company claims that this is the oldest logo trademark still in use today. Um, it has been updated a little bit. The original logo, which I'll put somewhere around here, <laughs> was kind of scary. It was very demonic looking. Um, he had kind of these talon hands and the text around the logo had flames coming off of it to kind of convey how spicy the deviled ham was. And you can actually see in the tail a bit of a pitchfork WM. Uh, and that's because it spells out William Underwood. So a little nod to the founder of the company in the logo. So yeah, I just thought that was really fascinating that that it was deviled ham that changed the way we eat food in America. All right, so the ham snacks have had some time to chill. The moment we've been all waiting for, in which I have to form this into loaves. <laughs> it says to shape mixture into four rolls, but it's like, it's tubular. I wouldn't call a roll like long like this, would I? I don't know. Anyway, since we're having a recipe, we're making two of them. So I guess I'm just gonna take half this goo. I want to try to not have to touch it too much, but I have a feeling I'm going to have to touch it with my hands. I think I'm going to have to touch it. I didn't realize how, I didn't know what the size of them would be. I think those are shaped pretty well, actually. <laughs> and I've let this cream cheese mixture sit out so that it's really pliable. <laughs> Spread over rolls. Okay. I was, I was just thinking to myself, maybe you should have shaped them and then put them in the fridge again to chill more so that they like can withstand, you know, frosting them with this cream cheese. Um, I think they look pretty good. Not as appealing as the front of the photo. It's just it's so smooth on the front of the photo. But we're gonna cover it with parsley, we're gonna cover it with olives. We'll see, we'll see what happens. <sighs> Should I try to smooth it out more? I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna cover it with saran wrap and put it back in the fridge to chill. It says to cover and chill for at least two hours. All right, we are over at the stove, which means it's time to make the puffs part of our deviled puffs. Um, so this is a shoe pastry batter we're making. I guess it's called a batter, I don't know. Um, I got the oven preheating to 400. In a saucepan, we are going to do a half cup of water and a quarter cup of butter. So that's half a stick's worth. And we're just going to turn that on and we're going to bring that to a rolling boil. It's boiling. It's boiling. Now we're going to stir in flour and stir vigorously over low heat until a mixture forms a ball about one minute. Vigorously, vigorously. It's clumping. It's like a ball. Okay, now turn off the heat and then beat in eggs all at once until smooth and glassy. So I'm gonna put in, how does this not burn? How does this not become scrambled eggs? I'm gonna just do it slowly. And by the way, this is two eggs that I've beaten a little bit just so I didn't have to deal with also getting them. I think we did it. <laughs> I think we made shoe pastry. All right, so now it's time to make our little puffs. Um, you could put this in a piping bag. I think that's what real professionals do. But Betty just says, drop dough by slightly rounded teaspoonfuls onto an ungreased baking sheet. So I kind of just want to do something like that and like plop them. Like that feels fine enough to me, right? She said one inch balls, two inches apart. Okay, so I'm going to put this batch in the oven for about 25 minutes um, and then we'll check on them and see how they're doing. Well, 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 something's gonna rye here. <laughs> Let me show you what happened. 
were in the oven for 25 minutes and I noticed I checked out halfway through and they weren't puffing as much as I thought. They were leaking a lot of oil, which I wasn't expecting. So I left them in longer than 25 minutes and thought maybe they just need more time to cook. Now I've taken one apart, I cut it in half and it's not, it's dense. It's more like a biscuit. It's, um, you know, when I cut it open, it's, there's, there's stuff the whole way through. And that is not what you want because it should have puffed so much that the inside is almost completely empty, except for maybe like a little bit of stretch of, of bread filament that you can kind of push away and fill. Like I can't fill these with ham when they're filled with stuff. Um, and it just is really moist inside still. So something went wrong. Um, I'm wondering if me trying to have the recipe caused an incorrect proportion of ingredients. Like we made a mistake in, I made a mistake in measuring. Maybe I just should have made the whole recipe. <laughs> Um, it did say to put the eggs in all at once, but that stressed me out because I didn't want them to scramble so I kind of poured them in slowly. I don't know if that did anything. I don't know if mixing with a spatula was the mistake, if I should have used um, a whisk. So I don't, I don't really know, but I think what I'm going to do is do some more research on shoe pastry. Uh, maybe watch another chef's video on how to make it and then try it again. Either with Betty Crocker's recipe or with a different recipe. Um, so stay tuned, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna make a new version of shoe pastry because I gotta try these ham snacks. That ham tasted so good, I gotta get it into a puff. We're gonna make a puff, we're gonna make a puff happen. I know we can do it. Um, so I'm gonna call this a big old mistake <laughs> and we'll try again. All right, all right, so it's the next day <laughs> and we have had to redo our puffs. And so um, I didn't want to chance doing it wrong again. And so what I did is I ended up watching um, a video by Claire Saffitz, which I'll link in the description down below for how she makes pate au choux. And it's in her dessert person cookbook. And this is the result of her recipe. Um, so if you want, you can go watch her video to see how she made these. And they definitely came out better. <laughs> I still don't think they're perfect. Like, I made a lot of them too small. Like, this is kind of the size you want all of them to be, not this size. <laughs> so um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to fill the small ones. But and some of them are misshapen, of course, like this. <laughs> but um, I do think that they puffed more. They also got a little brown. But I think they puffed more. They have more of an open interior. Like as you can see when I open this one, you move away this kind of filament and they are mostly hollow. So I can definitely get some ham, some ham in there and then place it back on top. I'm feeling more confident about these. Um, I'm excited to see how they taste with the ham inside. So it's time to finish assembling our ham snacks. All right, so I'm gonna finish assembling the ham loaves, ham loaves? <laughs> Deviled ham rolls. Um, so, as you can see on the front of the card, we have one that's just dressed with a little curly parsley, and one that has both curly parsley and olives on top. So, I'm just gonna make a little decor. We're gonna get them on the plate, we're gonna put some crackers around it, and we'll be good to go. Um, I am curious to see how transporting these to the plate goes. <laughs> I love that this was curly parsley because I didn't think people still use curly parsley and I didn't know if I could find it in the grocery store, but I found it. And I think that'll make all the difference. It's just, it is more presentable than regular parsley. Then I'm gonna take a few of these pimento stuffed olives. Pretty good. So, <laughs> now I'm just gonna decorate one of them with some parsley. I want just like the itty bits of parsley. I don't want like a big chunk like that. Then this one just has a little pile of parsley on the back and the front. I'm gonna meet the, the food stylist from 1971. <laughs> then I'm gonna take our little olives. That one's the best one, so we'll, we'll put that in front. 
these loaves are so much smaller than <laughs> when you look at the ratio of olive <laughs> to the ratio of olive to loaf. <laughs> the olives are so big on this loaf, which means the loaves are smaller, which means they probably could make three loaves instead of two. I don't know, it's hard to tell. You don't know how big these crackers are, how big that plate is. She doesn't give any like measurements. We did it. We did it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get cleaned up, put some crackers around it, and then we'll move on to the puffs. All right, so to fill the puffs, Cut off tops of puffs, remove filaments of soft dough. Fill each puff with a slightly rounded teaspoonful of the ham mixture. So I guess we'll just start. I got a serrated knife because I thought that might help. Now we're gonna fill it with a teaspoonful of the ham mix. And then we're gonna put the hat back on top. There it is! <laughs> Oh my god, they're so cute! I wonder if I should fill them more because in the photo you can see that they have like a generous amount kind of coming out of the hat, you know? <laughs> Let me try one more. I fill it more. We have an overflowing puff. We put the little hat back on. Yeah, so you can like see more of the ham out the side. I think that's what we want. Alright, it's time to take a bite of our ham snacks. I'm so excited! Um, where should we begin? I think I'm gonna do the ham pops first because I'm just so intrigued by them. They look so cute. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. All right, here we go. Hello, it is Melinda from the future. I, <laughs> unfortunately, the ham snack tasting and rating footage got corrupted. So the ham snacks are no longer with us. The ham snacks were eaten several weeks ago, but I'm gonna try to remember what they tasted like and give you kind of a rundown of how they felt. I'll put up some pictures of the ham snacks. You can, you can see them in all their final glory. Um, but over, overall, I was so shocked by this recipe. I was extremely nervous to eat deviled ham. I thought it was gonna be so gross and it tasted Incredible. It was just so flavorful and like the com there's like a complexity of flavor that I was not prepared for that is not typical for Betty Crocker era <laughs> recipes. I just like thought that the devil ham itself in the can was so good and everything we did to it just kind of elevated those flavors even further and made them even more kind of powerful and flavorful in your mouth. So the um, deviled ham rolls had olives in it. I thought that was really nice kind of pairing to the flavors of the deviled ham. And then the deviled puffs had horseradish. I thought that was a really nice pairing. They both had like sour cream or cream cheese in them, which like kind of added a creaminess to the texture and a tanginess. And I thought that they just both like tasted so good. And I was so shook by it. I can't get over it. Like to, to go from like thinking deviled ham is the nastiest thing I could possibly eat to being like a deviled ham stan <laughs> is mind blowing to me. Um, and I'm just like really happy with Betty Crocker's kind of innovation here and presentation. Like to take a canned meat that looks, no offense, kind of like cat food, not appetizing and creating two dishes that are so presentable and like I would love to see on a table at a party. They're just like little like bites you can pop into your mouth. They look so cool. I just like was really impressed with the innovation on this card. <laughs> like she did a great job. I will unfortunately have to dock at some points because I couldn't make the pat of shoe. I couldn't make the puffs part of the devil puffs using this recipe. I had to turn to a completely different recipe in order to make successful puffs. So like I can't give it a perfect score just because of that element. So I'm gonna give it four out of five red spoons. Okay, back in the box. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy homemaking.